If you follow this channel regularly, you might remember that my favorite camera to use is my Epson RD1. What stops me from using it more often is FOMO, the fear of missing out. The 6 megapixel image from the RD1 is fine for most things I photograph and post online, but I'm always worrying, what if I run into a great photo situation that deserves to be a big print that I can hang on the wall? It's always been possible to add more pixels to an image by a mathematical trick called upsampling. The problem with it is that the fake pixels don't actually add any information to the image, so your eye sees a larger image, but one that contains no more detail, so the image looks mushy. Lately though, I've been seeing ads from the Topaz people for a new product called Gigapixel AI, which they claim can upsample images while preserving detail by using artificial intelligence to determine the best way to add pixels to each area. Adobe Systems also has been working on upsampling, and the latest versions of Photoshop contain a routine called Preserve Details 2.0 that they claim gives better results when making images larger. With all this artificial intelligence, I got to wondering, could AI make my 6 megapixel RD1 into a convincing substitute for a 24 megapixel camera? Of course, I don't expect to make 6 megapixels look exactly like 24 megapixels, but maybe I could get close enough for casual viewing. I set myself a goal. Make a print from a 6 megapixel image that might look good enough to pass for a print from a 24 megapixel image. This isn't really as crazy as it sounds. An inkjet print is more forgiving than a computer screen for viewing because the pattern of the ink drops masks the image structure. To find out if I could pull this off, I needed a pair of test images. First, I made a 6 megapixel image with my RD1 and a 24 megapixel image with a Fujifilm X-Pro2. I used the same lens on both cameras to keep the results as comparable as possible. Now, since the goal was to compare prints, I had to make prints. These 4x6 prints of the full image don't show enough detail to see any difference. So I also made these, which are a crop section of what would scale out to be a 13 by 19 inch print. Then I photographed the prints with a macro lens. Most areas of the prints didn't show enough difference to make judgments, so I'm going to concentrate on the small type on the magazine spines in the lower right corner. First, here's a straight up comparison between the 6 megapixel image and the 24 megapixel image. The colored dots you might be able to see are the actual ink droplets that form the print. You can see right off why photographers like 24 megapixel cameras. The image on the right is much clearer and has more detail. Now I've moved the 24 megapixel image over to the left, and I'm going to compare it to three different upsampling methods applied to the 6 megapixel image. Here's what we'll call method 1 on the right. While it doesn't have as much clarity and detail as the left image, I think it's a pretty convincing substitute. The letters look almost as sharp and the tones are smooth. Now let's look at method 2. Again, the original 24 megapixel image is on the left and the upscaled 6 megapixel image is on the right. To me, this method isn't successful at all. The letters look blobby instead of clear and crisp and the upsampling process has added some model textures to the gray areas that look kind of nasty. I'd call this method a fail. Method 3 is interesting. I'd call it an improved version of method 2. The letters are still a bit blobby, but it's not as bad and they do look more crisp. The model textures are still there, but they're not as noticeable. It's still kind of problematic for this kind of subject, which has a lot of geometric details, but for images with more natural, organic shapes and textures, it might be acceptable. For the final face-off, I've put all the images side by side. The original 6 megapixel image is at top left, and the 24 megapixel image is at bottom left. The right side images were upsampled from the 6 megapixel original using our three methods. What's your pick? To me, none of the upsampled images look as good as the original 24 megapixel image, which is no surprise. But I'd say that both method 1 and method 3 look significantly better than the 6 megapixel original. 
may be good enough to make a 13 by 19 print that could stand up to casual viewing. I know you want to know who's the winner, so now the masks come off. Method 1 in the top center position was the Topaz Gigapixel AI app, and I think it has turned in an impressive showing. Method 2 in the bottom center spot was just a traditional export from Adobe Lightroom at a larger size, with no AI and no other tricks. So it's not surprising that the result wasn't very good. Method 3 in the top right corner was Photoshop using the Preserve Details 2.0 option. Again, for this type of subject, I don't think it did quite as well as Topaz, but for subjects without so much geometry, it might give a more natural looking result. My takeaway? While neither of these is quite as good as a real 24 megapixel image, either one might be good enough to pass off for a 13 by 19 print. AI upsampling still might be something I'll only do in an emergency, but it's going to make me feel more confident about carrying around my RD1.